Hi, Dave Smith here, DJS Photography. This is another video in my black and white workflow and uh, we're coming back on to the printing now. I've just uploaded a couple of videos about the pinhole camera that I bought recently and, uh, uh, and prior to that I'd done a video on uh, coating the art paper with the palladium salts. The next stage uh, in the palladium printing is to calibrate the process and uh, what I'm doing is uh, I've recently built a, a UV light bank using um, black light bulbs, uh, fluorescent tubes uh, for UV. Uh, here in Brussels I have a um, plate burner up in my house in Sweden which is uh, where I have previously uh, printed but I'm usually only there during a few months in the summer so I wanted to be able to print here in Brussels. So I built this uh, UV light bank and now I need to calibrate that so that my uh, process is repeatable uh, and, I, and I know what, uh, what I'm going to get from the print. So I thought it would be useful to go through the calibration process uh, for people who wanted to get into um, printing not just palladium but uh, really, really anything. The process is pretty much the same. Uh, and even if you're printing from, say, an enlarger in a, in a traditional dark room with uh, uh, silver halide papers, um, certainly this first step will be uh, will be very useful to you, and will just tighten up your process if you're not doing something of this sort already. So this video is about stage one, and that's um, that's finding your base exposure uh, to get uh, a maximum black. And I've uh, I've feel that I've pinned that down in uh, five prints and I'll just go through those. Before I do that, I'm just going to mention the stufa, the step weight. Uh, I have two. I have a 21 step uh, uncalibrated step weight and I have a 31 step um, calibrated step weight. Uh, you, don't, you don't necessarily need calibrated but figured why not because actually they're not that expensive and that's essentially what it is it's uh, just <laughs> a series of um, of uh, slightly more dense uh, steps as you go down the wedge and starting here this is step one there uh, completely clear going down to step 31 so that's uh, a 30 step range and 30 steps on, a, on that scale is 10 stops, 10 stops from top to bottom. So that's the uh, that's the device that I use uh, when I'm calibrating. I use the uncalibrated one just to uh, just to get me started. So let me explain what I did. So I've got uh, got myself some coated paper. I hope you can see that. That's uh, that's my first now. I had no idea of uh, what the exposure was going to be like uh, at all. So I just started from the sort of typical exposures that I get with the plate burner and that's usually around 11 minutes for, uh, for palladium. So I started, I've got both step wedges and I covered one up. Uh, I covered up uh, the longer step wedge there, the 31, the 30 step wedge and uh, set my timer for 10 minutes for this step wedge and then took that off and left the whole lot for another 10 minutes. So this one, the short one, that's a 21 scale by the way, uh, in probably half stops. Um, so again, 10 stops uh, from top to bottom. Um, so that had 20 minutes, this had 10 minutes. And also what I've done, you can probably just see here on the edge that the um, uncovered uh, material is much darker than this patch here and that's because I, on both of these step wedges I overlaid to half the width of the step wedge with um, a, a, a band of the material that I'm going to print on because obviously I have to get the uh, exposure right for printing through that material and you can see that up here. Now immediately as we look at it, I'm going to just take my pen all right so here is uh, seven six five four three two and one uh, and nothing 
nothing has gone to maximum black here at all, apart from obviously the edges. Um, and ideally what we want is that the whole lot, these, these covered clear patches here, uh, blend into the uh, black of the uh, uncovered material. And then uh, what I'm going to look for is actually the step one and step two blend together. And that will just make sure that my that I'm giving enough exposure to the uh, sensitized material to lift it up slightly off the toe of the curve uh, for the film. Uh, so sorry for the um, sensitized material. Now this is exactly the same as film. You you know I'm sure that if you shoot in black and white film that old adage of uh, exposed for the shadows developed for the highlights. And what that means really is that you have to give enough exposure to uh, activate the uh, the chemistry. You want to get it off the uh, off the toes. So you've got this uh, shallow S curve for the uh, exposure of your film, and down there at the sort of the so-called toe, it's it's not really very linear. And what you want to do is to lift the exposure so that the area of the uh, subject that you see that's got the darkest tone that you want to maintain texture in uh, comes up onto the up onto the straight part of the curve so you have to give it enough exposure to do that and we're in a similar sort of routine here so what I'm looking for is that the first and the second uh, steps completely blend together uh, and that's a third of a stop, remember, on this 31 scale uh, stufa. If they completely blend together, then I'm, uh, I'm pretty certain of getting a good maximum black uh, from my, thing, uh, from my uh, exposure. And I've lifted it enough to get it off the toe of the um, response curve for the material that I'm using. So that's the, that's the general idea. And I was quite a long way off it from this. Nothing... Is, um, is blending together at all uh, and this is uh, drastically underexposed so that but that gave me some information now just a little bit more information about my light bank uh, I've built it uh, it's a pretty kind of Heath Robinson affair but I've built it uh, in, in a, uh, on a on a Dexian and I've clamped that to an old table and it's lifted off the table probably by about uh, eight or nine inches so this was quite a long way from the light. So I then thought for test number two, uh, this, this by the way is 10 minutes, 20 minutes, I'm at least one stop and probably two stops away with that. So that's beginning to suggest something like 40 to 80 minutes. So what I did for my next test was that I raised the bed up. So I took the, uh, I just put in a, a kind of two inch block and put my printing frame on top of that. So I've, I've moved it two inches closer to the light bank and I've also increased to 40 minutes and 80 minutes. Now, you know, I've changed two things at once there which is typically bad practice but I don't really mind because what I'm really looking for is, uh, is a point where I'm overexposing uh, somewhat drastically uh, because that will allow me to, to, uh, to step backwards. Okay, and as I look at this, let's have a let's have a little look at uh, this again. I've covered them the other way around this time because um, I'm actually going to settle on using the the 31 step wedge presently. But here is, uh, and you can more clearly see the bit that's covered and uncovered with the substrate that I'm going to print on. But we've got uh, step seven, six, five, four, maybe three. So I'm just uh, I'm just about right in here. Uh, we probably want to I probably want to just take that down by about a third of a stop. But I'm at 80 minutes. Now 80 minutes is a long time for a print. Uh, I have absolutely no idea what the reciprocity of this material is either. But 80 minutes is going to be way way too long. Uh, that's just the exposure, remember. So and that's kind of more or less right. I'm probably a third of a stop um, overexposed uh, and I'm at two inches. So my next step was uh, now that I've sort of pinned down where the exposure is between these two, I'm going to dispense with the half stop uh, stufa and I'm going to raise it, I'm going to raise again. I'm going to, I've, I've added another block 
So I'm now four inches off the bed of the table and, pr and my printing frame is probably only about four or five inches from the uh, black lights. And I printed this again at 80 minutes. So if we have a look at what we can see, there's 10, 9, I can probably just about get stop 8, in, sorry, um, step 8 in there. Remember I want separation down to uh, step 2. So that's probably two stops um, overexposed at 80 minutes. And two stops off that uh, would be 20 minutes, but uh, I actually gave it uh, one and a third stops uh, initially, just to see how things looked. And here's one and a third, and I'm at uh, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, possibly 4. So I am, I am indeed two thirds of a stop away with that one. So my final test, which is the one I, uh, I'm going to use, is this stufa. Uh, this is uh, 20 minutes at, uh, at that highest point. And I could raise it, I could raise it more, but I'm okay with 20 minutes. And I've got uh, eight, seven, six, five, four, and I can just see step three, but steps two and one blend together, okay? And they, everything here is all blended uh, right the way through, and you can barely just about make out the very edge of the material that I've put over. So I'm pretty happy with that as a, as a base exposure uh, for 20 minutes, four inches up off, the um, bed of the table. Okay, so that's that's my first calibration point is to get that uh, get that exposure for maximum black. And before I go, there's just one other thing that I want to mention. I'm going to go right back here to this early one. I'm just going to put those side by side. Okay, and what I want to uh, pick out here is the clearing. You can definitely see yellow staining in these two in these two step wedges here but this one's gone to a nice paper white with this one in these early step wedges i had a, a three-stage clearing bath of a citric acid at two percent and the routine is to have three baths and your your paper spends five minutes in each bath and then as the first bath gets cloudy after, I don't know, half a dozen prints or so, you discard that, move the other two up, and then put a fresh bath in position number three. And that's how, that's how we use clearing. Now, a couple of points. First of all, Berger Cot, Cot 320, which is the paper I use, is known to be quite tricky to clear. And palladium, pure palladium, which again is what I use, is, um, is known to be and difficult to clear. So I changed my clearing. What I do, what I did with this one is um, the same two baths of citric acid. So five minutes, five minutes, then a good thorough rinse, and then it goes into a bath of 8% sodium sulfate. And you can see that's cleared that print pretty nicely. So that then is step one of the um, calibration process. The next step now is to match the uh, the contrast range, and uh, I, I've made the first prints for that, and that, and so I'll make another video uh, once I've gone through that process. But I hope this was of some interest, and you should, I, I think, find that this is perfectly usable for any process. It gives you that base exposure to get your maximum black. So thanks for watching. Bye now.